Chenier? Here. McCarty? Here. Daryl Fong? Here. Pennell? Here. Mayor Johnson? And Vice Mayor Ashby? Here. We have a quorum. A couple of announcements. The meeting is broadcast live this evening. There will be a replay on Saturday at 7 p.m. on Metro Cable Channel 14. If you have a cell phone, please turn it to the silent position, and speaker slips are located in the back of the room. If you wish to speak, please complete one and turn it in to the assistant clerk here at the front. We also have cordless microphones and assisted listening devices if you need them. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Councilmember Rob Fong, would you lead us, please? Sure, thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. City Attorney, do you have anything to report out from closed session? No, Vice Mayor, there's no report out today. All right, then we are going to start off with a special presentation on the recognition of September as Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. And I understand Councilmember Daryl Fong is going to help us out. No comment. Go ahead, Daryl. Yeah. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, Mr. Wells, the board member with California Prostate Cancer Coalition, is here to accept the resolution. Mr. Wells, along with Bill Doss, are peer navigators at the UCD Cancer Center and assist and mentor newly diagnosed prostate cancer patients. So, we have a resolution for you, Mr. Wells. Would you like to have some, make a comment or add anything to this before I read it? I'm sorry. Okay. Do, do you have any comments? Yes, I do. Okay. Thank Go you. right ahead. Uh, you may or may not know this, but one out of every six men is diagnosed with prostate cancer versus one out of every eight women being diagnosed with breast cancer. In other words, there's 33% more men being diagnosed than there are women. The American family... In an American family, that means the husband has greater odds he'll be with, diagnosed with prostate cancer. The uh, important number, even more important number, is that in the United States, the, of the 247,000 men who will be diagnosed, there will be approximately 28,000 who will die from it. Within that, Within that number is also also the uh, African American population, who has twice the death rate of the white male population. The so what to all of this is that there's a very simple solution. It's called early detection or screening. It's a blood test. It's very simple. It's not tough like a mammogram. And what I would suggest, not only for you, but for your families, is that the next time you, you ladies are on your way to getting a mammogram, grab the significant other and say, come on, we're going to have a double header. <laughs> it won't hurt. I'm going to do the tough stuff. You just have to have a little bit of blood taken. Okay? Thank, Thank you, Mr. Usually, Wells. I appreciate it. You bring this to us and being an advocate for us. And again, I get my blood test done regularly, as I hope the other council members up here do too. So thank you very much. I'm going to bring this resolution to you. Thank you.
Thank you very much for that. Okay, Madam Clerk, do we have anyone signed up for matters not on the agenda? We do. We have three or four people. Okay. The first is Lorraine Brown, followed by Alan Miller and Tim Boyd. Thank you for this opportunity to come before you again. Last time that I was here, I um, made a brief statement that the civilians and Americans that are citizens that are not connected to special interest or government did not have a voice, and I did write something up. Now I'm following up on that issue because there seems to be, unlike the previous past three presidential, uh, presidential administrations, we don't have aggressive threats of false imprisonment going on, but we have bullying, mocking, and uh, discrimination. At least I'm experiencing that. Other people are experiencing the same thing on a daily basis, and chemical assault. I didn't plan on responding to the last comment, but I want to say it would be nice if we had an environmental day where we had better control over our airspace and um, we didn't have this uh, constant um, bad air days that we've been having. Um, all of us are sick because we breathe that in and it does affect your cells, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. Uh, Gandhi said the worst form of violence is poverty, and I say that is not a true statement. The worst form of violence is public corruption and a venal law enforcement, whether it's uniformed or security forces. So um, let me just briefly say that the last three administrations, national administrations, had flawed policies, and we are still dealing with those policies, and we really need to revisit them. We are rewarding failure, and that seems to be the case with redevelopment enterprise zones, uh, Ms. Brown, your work. time has expired. Thank you for your comments. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate it. And thank you, you Aunt Angelique Ashbury. Thank you for this opportunity. We really need to look at those policies and what's in the best interest of our civilians. Thank you. Thank you. Alan? My name is Alan Miller. I'm speaking here today as a citizen as a, and as a daily commuter on the Capitol Corridor. I spoke last week on the station platform move. At one point I looked up and not one council member was looking at me. In Davis when I speak, all council members make eye contact. I might not be a citizen of Sacramento, but I work here. I use your train station, such as it now is, and I spend money here. I ask your respect. I know at least two daily riders who now leave work 15 minutes earlier on the earlier trolley to make their train because they are concerned about missing the train if their trolley is only a few minutes late. One of these people had to make special arrangements with her supervisor to take a shorter lunch each day so she could continue to commute by train. Will all riders be so determined? Indeed, will they begin to drive instead? Should we not be making public transit as convenient as possible rather than less so? As I emerged from the top of the ramp today, I saw several people running for the outbound train and I knew they were not going to make it. A few minutes later, the horn sounded, the train departed, and in the distance, like ants, I saw each of these people emerge from the tunnel, their train pulling away. Will they return to ride again? Perhaps you say they should have arrived earlier. Perhaps, but the point is to make taking the train easy, not a challenge. Hekasak, in her blog, a SAC resident, regarding the situation, and I toned down her language to single letters. Her blog was titled, F you, Amtrak. To quote her, Amtrak, I quit you, the boondoggle, the quagmire of moving the tracks. This is not just being resistant to, train, to change. It made me laugh. The city is comparing the extra walk to Grand Central Station, but there are like 100 trains there at any given time. 
Why would I pay $10 a day to ride 10 minutes on my bike, walk 10 minutes to the platform, take 15 minutes to ride the train when I could drive in 20 minutes? I would have to be an idiot to continue doing it. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Miller. Tim Boyd. Following Tim is Kevin Carter and then Mac Worthy. Good evening, uh, Vice Mayor, City Council. Um, Steve Cohen, once again, I hope that you can, you know, hold your peace for a while while people are talking. The gentleman that spoke speaks volumes of what I keep hearing. I get the same feedback of you guys are televised, and it looks ridiculous. It looks cartoonish. Last week, they were somebody was giving testimony of something very important, and when they asked you for your vote, Steve Cohn, you just threw your thumb up in the Point air. Point of order. Got done Mr. Boyd, hold on for just Point one moment, Point of order. Yes. We have uh, rules that talk about how you need to address the full council. You want to talk to me personally? You can talk to me personally. That's not what I'd you're be, here I'd love for. To. You'd never answer. You're here to, Boyd, you're here to yeah. address the full council, so do it. Thank you. Well, thank you, and show some respect, and I wouldn't have to be standing here doing this. You're you're not addressing okay. the full council. Well, I've said my piece, and I hope that maybe some of it will resonate with you. Probably not, but anyhow, can, can't shoot me for trying. Um, I'm here tonight to report on a condition on Del Paso Boulevard. Maybe I need to bring this to the city manager's attention. I advocate throughout Sacramento for the underdog, the underdog being people that this city council has seemed to disenfranchise, people that cannot stay here, people that have been cut off because the buses up until recently haven't run that late at night. There's been shifting and changing of the way that the public can speak. Sometimes it's last when the moose were here and it was all about the kings. There were several nights where people had to wait till the very end before they could come up and speak. One lady couldn't even get her wheelchair out of here in time to catch the last bus home. So these are the kind of things we need to be more transparent about. We need to address what's going on in the community. City manager, it wouldn't hurt you to come down to Sandy Sheedy's district because she's about to retire. Every day as I'm going to work, I see senior citizens crossing that long street on Del Paso Boulevard in Arden where the traffic lights change so fast in favor of the light rail. Sometimes I don't know if there's an engineer that can get out there and do something about that, but you talk about a, a public safety danger. This is bad news. People can't, I can't even get across the street that fast, and I'm a runner. These people cannot cross that street. Those lights flash in the blink of an eye. So those are some of the things you might want to just come out and drive around a little bit. Go through the alleyways like you used to in the olden days, and don't just do it around election time. Try to do it 24-7 a little bit more often. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Boyd. Kevin? Can you shed a little light for me, please? City Council members and uh, Assistant Mayor Ashby, you are all aware of this document. This document that I put here today that holds a human history. A human history of something that took place here in Sacramento, California on January 13th of 1983. And it's been telling a story over and over and over about the discovery and the recovery of our city but not just our city, but our state, with its revolutionary values and true meaning holds for a coin that says so much eloquently and even comes from your district when we talk about Ride Sally Ride. See, it was January of 1983 when I found this coin. And the thing is today, none of you, and I'm addressing all of you, have not paid attention to this document. But I'm going to leave you one time with something that holds eloquent, that I'll be speaking at the state capitol on September 9th, 162 years of the history of our state and how this coin fits in the, 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 the proper position of our state to where it has a regrowth and a recovery and an understanding of each and every one of us and our purpose and why we serve in life and why you're in a position to serve. This coin, I found the coin. It was a coin of gold. It had the year 1909, and it was full of hope. You see, this coin I found in its mystery, this lady stood for our history and the birthright of our democracy. You see, this coin I found, I will always claim, it is for the people to see if its natural remains. See, with this gold coin of liberty that truly holds the reflection of all, may it remain and teach us all. And may the spirit of God be in us all, so we as the people never fall. And I changed this up Thank because you, Mr. you Carter. guys are making changes when it comes to the First Amendment. Mr. Carter, and when these changes are your made, time is expired. Then these times we must stand up. 
Thank you, Mr. Carter, for your comments. For Mr. Carter? No, I'm sorry, Mr. Carter. The city council has fired people out of the city council. Your microphone is no longer on, Mr. Carter. Thank you, 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 Mr. Carter.
You all can laugh when it's all non-profit because that's, oh, you can go out and beg for money, but who gives the account for what that money is spent? There's no accountability of what that money is spent on. It's just money sold out there. Money just don't go away, people. Money has to be able to attract the money. That's the reason I speak to an oversight. If an oversight don't have subpoena power, there's no system having an oversight. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Worley. John Ryger. Uh, good evening. I'm John Rieger, president of the local chapter of Veterans for Peace. And I know that this issue is not being voted on tonight, but frankly, I want you to not even pass it till next week. I want you to stop it right here and now. Right now, American soldiers are fighting and dying overseas, and they're being told that they're over there protecting Americans' freedoms. But while this is happening, some of those very freedoms are in danger of being taken away right here in this room by their very own elected representatives, you folks up there in the comfy chairs. And why are you considering doing this? It seems that some occupiers have killed the grass in front of City Hall, our own City Hall. Well, Sacramento government has survived for 160 years without such draconian ordinances as you're considering to pass without any laws restricting our freedom to peaceably assemble in front of the City Hall. So I want you to not pass this to next week, and if it comes back next week, I want you to vote against it. We are more important than the grass. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Reader. Roger, and then James, I believe it's Fago Clark, and then Andrew Haymore. Hello. Um, free speech is central to democracy. It's uh, without free speech, how can people uh, make up, how can people participate in democracy and make up informed decision on what's happening um, to their democracy and participate in democracy if there's no free speech? If people can't learn what's going on and, and what's happening, they can't participate and take part in democracy. It's important not to, not to destroy free speech or trample on free speech. And that's 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 the job of that's your guys' job is to protect protect our rights, protect free speech. So I'm, I'm not sure if you're aware, but like over the past three years, um, Americans have lost uh, they've lost 40 percent of their wealth in the past three years alone, and it's been a redistribution of wealth. It's been wealth has gone to the one percent. And the American dream is dying right now. It's going going down the drain. And uh, who's out there speaking about it? Who's talking about it? Who's out there protecting people's rights to saving the American dream? It's Occupy. So support us and don't pass laws like this. Support what we're doing and uh, back us up on it. I think I'm done. Thank you for your comments. James? Hello once again, city council members. Uh, I just want to say that this new ordinance, I know we all know that it wasn't going to get passed today, but we felt that we should be out here to keep it from even getting spoken on uh, on the 11th. It shouldn't even be an issue. It violates our constitution, which strictly states that no law shall be written that inhibits our freedom of speech, our right to assemble. And this ordinance uh, prohibits specific time periods, prohibits you from uh, being able to do most forms of protest without this, uh, without the permit that's got insurance fees and all these excessive fees. Uh, you can only have a table in one specific spot. You're not allowed to feed the people at your protest. Come on now. I mean, food. Is that really a threat to anybody? I mean, it, it, the text says it's to keep a safe environment. How is feeding anybody threatening you? Who is that threatening? Uh, how is us having a table with information on it threatening anybody? And if you want to complain about the grass, well, there's been multiple times where we've offered to do the work for the grass ourselves. We've even had people out there attempt to receive the grass to be threatened with arrest for vandalism for trying to fix the lawn. 
you know. Accountability is one of the things we are about, and we would like to be able to fix the lawn without being arrested, but instead you guys would rather pass this ordinance. While you've got uh, city employees uh, embezzling the money or misusing funds of our city money by buying themselves trips to Disneyland, when just a couple months ago you had the city auditor here asking you guys to establish a whistleblower hotline that would have only cost about $300,000 of taxpayer money, and, well, you can't afford that. But you can afford to uh, try to pass this new ordinance, which is probably going to end up costing a lot more money in the long run than a whistleblower hotline would have. Um, by the way, how many of you did uh, agree to the audit so far? How many of you have uh, turned over your records? We unanimously voted for that. Your time has expired, Mr. Clark. Thank you for your comments. Andrew? I'm Andrew. How's it going, guys? Um, first time I came in here and talked to you guys, uh, I was kind of mad because I had a confrontation with the police. I was demonstrating my First Amendment right over there in Cesar Chavez Park, which uh, First Amendment had been abridged. I guess you can't demonstrate your freedom of religion around here anymore. But they stole my passport and some stuff, and I'm uh, still waiting to get it back, and it's, it's going to be returned to me. And... Um, my comments really aren't directed at all of you guys. It's directed at everybody in this room. Because when we said this Pledge of Allegiance, we said under God, one nation. So what does it mean to be one with your people? Have you guys been out there to Cesar Chavez? Have you been out there to visit these people? Have you been out there out of your, your suits? I've had, I have suits too. I mean, I can look real nice. I'm not, making, I'm not trying to condescend against you or anything. But these, you want to be one with your people. You need to create a community. You want to create opportunities for people to be, if, you, if there's no jobs, then get something going so people can serve each other. Get people together to clean up something that's messed up. Do something productive with your people. And this Ordinance 1247, it's in direct violation with the Constitution. It's an abomination to the Constitution. You're trampling all over the Founding Fathers and everything that they died for. And these people, they have a right. And even if you pass it, it's dead in the water. It's not going to last. This is America. And we will be loud if we have to. We'll shake down this whole building with our voice if we need to. But most importantly, Lucifer, you guys know about Lucifer? He said he wanted to put himself above the thrones of God. Jesus said, I want Mr. you to be Hamer, one. Mr. Hamer, your time has expired. I want you to be one. Thank you for your comments. So now understand this. You want to be one with your people? They're over there in Cesar Chavez Park. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Appreciate you being here. Anthony Holden. How's it going today? I, um... Although I feel that a lot of it was largely covered from the rest of the people, I believe that there shall never be any idea that makes any one of you better than us. We are out there trying to make our government aware of these problems, and you all are thinking about the grass. Um, there's bigger issues. The grass does not concern uh, corporate personhood. We shouldn't have our dollar be freedom of speech. Our dollar does not mean that much. Not anymore. Our dollar is legal tender. It has no value. It's an IOU. And we need to think about what we should do in this society other than restrict people from where they can go. And just build a sense of community. We. If we want to do something about the vegetation, let us plant a community garden on that patch of dead grass. Let us do something that can feed people, help people, allow them to be productive and safe. Have a great night. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Holden. Okay, the last four speakers then are Linda Roberts, Kevin Carter, Cress Bellucci, and Tim Boyd. Uh, 
Um, so I'm a little confused because I want to also want to speak at another agenda item. Is it on the consent calendar? Yeah. Then you, you have two minutes to speak to both. So Mac got two two yeah. minutes and, and I get fits. one. And he yeah, that's five. violation of the rules, but uh, I'll talk to you more about that later. Sure. You ought to be ashamed. Okay. Well, so I'm going to try to talk about two different things at once, which I shouldn't have to do. I live behind Shiloh Baptist Church. Now, uh, that item is not on the consent counter, so if you'd like to speak to Shiloh Baptist Church, you can sign up to do that separately off of that. I did. Okay. Well, can. then you'll have another speaker slip for that item. Well, now I've wasted my time fighting about that. Actually, okay. we stopped it. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Um, Just speak to the consent. So uh, this is the second time I've spoken on the issue of the horrible anti-free speech ordinance. You guys need to pay attention to the comments that have been in the B, for instance, in the News and Review. People contact me from all over the world. I have Facebook friends all over the world, and they think it's funny. We're being laughed at. You know, look at the beginning of this ordinance where it talks about danger and incompatible activities. Chalk is an incompatible activity. When I tell people that, they laugh. I tell them how next week I may be a criminal because I'm one of the ones that feed Occupy and I may be a criminal next week. Yeah, this, is, this is absolutely silly. I was a public worker. There is nothing that goes on at Occupy that would stop a public worker from doing their job. Cowbells? We're going to ban cowbells? Come on, guys. You know, And it is so vaguely worded. This is like the camping ordinance that's going to cause all kinds of trouble because you're saying, oh, you can't put a... a, a a personal item down. You can't bring your dog with you. We're going to be sorry if we pass this. It's going to just create lawsuits. I've been told that we spent a half million dollars arresting Occupy people, and I'll tell you, as someone who lives in Oak Park and we're having that um, burglary um, rash, I count how many cops are here. And then I report back to them how many cops are here. And that means we're not getting services in our neighborhood because you're down there making sure that somebody doesn't play the ukulele. You know, come on, guys. There is nothing here at Occupy except freedom of speech. And this business where you can't be in the center without a permit, that you can't ha use the table to eat and to pass out stuff, <laughs> come on. You know, it's not even worth being on the agenda one time, let alone more than once. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Roberts. Kevin. Democracy, democracy, democracy. When we talk about democracy, when we talk about the First Amendment of a Constitution, when we talk about the meaning of it and what it did to put you, you, and you in your seats, when we talk about that freedom of those that came before you, to put you, you, and you in the position of trust. Democracy is not a suppression because that's what that does for those that sit on the law council. That's what that does. It suppresses. My voice is a voice that you hear outside with the megaphone. I'm going to keep that megaphone because that megaphone is the fierce urgency of now. And it's allowed for everybody in the city of Sacramento to hear the truth and the awareness of what's going on, not just with you, but with our whole entire government today. This is where we stand throughout this election and everything that's going on. While chaos is going on, you're implementing and putting things together that suppress people that won't have the right to come in this building because of their pockets being empty, that takes away the courage. Back in the day, they said, show the guineas of some paperwork and they'll run. These kind of things that are being done today inside of our government, and these things are not just. I live for the things that are just. I put my life on the line each and every day, right outside here. I don't have protection. I have to say what I have to say, mean what I mean. And you guys should do the same thing for the people that are struggling here. Take away those, those uh, frivolous laws that you make. They don't do anybody any justice. Thank you, Mr. Carr, for your comments. Chris? Chris Gallucci? Please don't speak from the audience. I'll have to have you removed if I have to ask you again. You can walk out or we can ask our sergeant of arms to escort you if you can't stop. Okay. Thank you. 
I'm sorry, sir. Can you give us just a moment? Thank you. All right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Thanks. Uh, my name is Chris Bellucci. I'm the vice chair of the ACLU here in Sacramento uh, County. Um, I'm truly really here today, I know it's on the consent calendar, to ask you to pull it from the consent calendar and to reconsider this uh, before it goes to a full vote. I don't think a week is enough time for people to really uh, organize and express their views. I know that I know I just want to speak to Steve Cohn personally, but he's my uh, council person. I haven't had, had a chance to write him about this uh, ordinance or proposed ordinance. Um, but generally, I mean, uh, I know that everyone here received a letter from the ACLU of Northern California. And in that letter a few weeks ago, they explained uh, uh, that there were many things about this ordinance that were unconstitutional, at least we, we believed it to be so. And I would uh, thank the uh, uh, legal uh, people on this end for uh, fixing the uh, ordinance that, to make it a little bit more compatible with our Constitution. Um, however, there are still many things that need to be questioned, such as the curfew. Uh, I don't think there's uh, anywhere in the Constitution, either in California or in the U.S., that it, where it says that people have the right to free speech, but it ends at 11 o'clock at night. Um, uh, Steve Cohen himself said at a previous hearing about this that, that he's not aware of any problems that Occupy has caused uh, that would require something like this. Uh, so I'd like to say that this is a solution uh, in search of a problem. And uh, I think as we'll learn, many organizations will be affected by this, not just Occupy. Uh, it's important for us to consider that when we pass these kind of restrictive ordinances that affect our free speech rights. Thanks. Thank you for your comments. And Tim Boyd is our last speaker. Well, here we are again. Um, I'm hoping that every one of you kind of is listening to what people are saying to you tonight because I've been up here as a grassroots activist for years, longer than some of you have been sitting in the council seats here. So if it had not been for being able to do things grassroots style, we wouldn't have had a bottle bill for the state of California. I worked for Californians Against Waste and trying to get that thing through with all the um, big bottling manufacturers that had million dollar ads that they could put on TV. If we couldn't do what we did grassroots style, when I was in a group called Oak Park Citizens United Against Slumlords, we had to stand out in front of this city council with blowhorns and picket signs to get Mayor Fargo into gear to come down to Oak Park to see about some things, because every time she came down, she delivered a good speech, a snow job, and whatever else you want to call it. But if I want to see a snow job, I can wait for Frosty Snowman to come down the pike. So what we had to do was come down here and speak on things, and all of a sudden we started seeing action. But the minute we stopped speaking, the minute the blowhorns went away, all of a sudden the stuff started popping up again. So you're denying people the fundamental freedom of speech. People have been killed in the past. You know, what happened to the Dr. King marches that we used to have? What did Dr. King, what was that all about? Cesar Chavez, what was he all about? He'd be crying in his grave right now to see what you guys did in that park over there, cutting down the voice of the people. It's bad enough we don't have the diversity with the bands. We have to fight hard to get a Latin band over there in the Cesar Chavez Park. Now people cannot sit up there and and testify to things that need to be changed in Sacramento. We're talking about people that are homeless, that are laying out on the streets. This has been a learning experience for me. When I went over there and saw the Occupy movement, it was a learning experience. When the people that I worked with for a federal agency went out there at lunchtime, they weren't afraid of that. They came down here and they learned something. And I don't think you guys were too afraid. I see y'all walking through the park. What is the harm in all this stuff? And if you're worried about the grass, plant a few seeds. Flowers are going to grow. Just some stuff to think about. And the lawsuits, I mean, you know, I have relatives that are living in Germany, and they see all this stuff. It's gone viral, and it does look silly. You know, they're calling me up. They're like, what's going on? Is this really turning into such a police state, the capital city? Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Boyd. I think that's the end of our comments for the consent calendar. I'll entertain a motion. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstaining? That's it for the consent calendar. We can move on to the discussion items, Madam Clerk. Okay, our first discussion item is a public hearing item number 14. It's the Shiloh Baptist Church landmark nomination. Good evening, Vice Mayor. Good evening, Vice Mayor Ashby and members of the City Council. I'm Suzanne Cook. 
with the Community Development Department, and I'd like to give a brief pres a PowerPoint presentation on the Shiloh Baptist Church. assist from the back room here. Uh, the landmark nomination was requested by the Board of Directors for listing on the Sacramento National Registers and it was actually listed in the National Register uh, July of this year. The church structure was constructed in 1963 through the efforts of uh, the congregation, led by Reverend Willie P. Cook, then the pastor of the church, uh, was designed by James C. Dodd, who was Sacramento's first licensed African-American architect. The next few slides are of the church structure. A little bit about the congreg con congregation history. It's the second oldest African American congregation in Sacramento um, and one of the largest in the region. Um, it's associated with important individuals in Sacramento's history and, and civic institutions, including Netta Sparks and Reverend Willie Cook. A little bit about James C. Dodd. Um, as I mentioned earlier, he's Sacramento's first licensed African-American architect. Um, Shallow Baptist Church was also his first major architectural project. This slide um, includes all the um, eligibility criteria for the church. And the next two slides are the significant features and characteristics of the church. And the staff's recommendation is to pass an ordinance listing the Shallow Baptist Church in the Sacramento Register of Historic and Cultural Resources as a landmark and specifying the property's significant features and characteristics. This concludes staff's presentation. And um, Dorothy Rendell, who's the church's historian, is here to uh, representing the applicant and would like to speak, um, would like to say a few words. Good afternoon. I'm Dorothy Randall. I'm a member of Shallow Baptist Church. And uh, I'm here on behalf of also Shiloh and just a, a voice my personal opinion as to why I think Shiloh should be nominated or given this recognition. And I appreciate the committee for giving me this opportunity to, to speak and also the recognition of the consideration to uh, have Shiloh listed as the, on the register, Sacramento Register. First of all, um, everything that involved with Shiloh from its first beginning, when it was first located on 5th Street between N and O in 1856. Second location was at 6th and P Street, and the current location is at 9th Avenue and 36th Street. Uh, everything that evolved around Shallow was associated with African Americans. Uh, we used our only resources to make Shallow what it is today. We were in a position where African Americans were not allowed the opportunity to not even get along. And these are people that came together with their own education, thoughts, and ideas, using resources to mortgage their home to get what they have. And the end results on the building of Shallow was through Reverend Willie P. Cook, who's also well known in the community. He served Shallow for 25 years, and he's currently pastor emeritus of Shallow Baptist Church. And it's the members who evolved and made Shallow what it is. Not only that, Shallow being relocated because of redevelopment redevelopment in downtown Sacramento at 6th and P Street, the people also again came together uh, with their resources. And in my opinion, 
you know, during the mid 1800s, when there weren't many African Americans through 18, mid 1800, 1900, uh, it was Shiloh who made such an impact with the African American community. If not, they had nowhere to go um, as far as resources, uh, anything that you can think of, because they weren't allowed in a lot of other places. And uh, the last thing I want to say is that uh, we, as African American, we do matter. And I think to give the church this recognition will also uh, make better citizens within the community because we are uh, faith-based. And not only that, uh, we do a lot in the community. The church is not the size of other churches maybe around us, but uh, there's many things that we do not only at the doorsteps of Shallow, but we do it national. There's so many things that Shallow do that you don't have a clue, and it goes on on a daily basis. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Staff, have anything further? Okay, then we have about four or five folks signed up to speak on this item. We'll hear from them and then from Council Member Chenier. Okay, William Berg, and then Mac Worthy, and Kaya Marie West, and then L.R. Roberts. Good evening, my name is William Berg. I'm president of the Sacramento Old City Association. I'd like to express my support for the nomination of this property to the Sacramento Register of Historical Resources. I think it's a fitting tribute to the work of James Dodd and to the legacy of this historic congregation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Berg. Mac Worthy. People, uh, it's not that given to deny them the respect of historical. It's the caveat behind it. The lady said, the reason they came there, because of developers downtown. That's going to happen to you all right there. And the reason that they are putting it on the historical, that when they get ready to tear down from 9th Street back in that to 34th Street, you all will be left standing. When you speak of a, a community church uh, and go on these things by historical, did you count the members, the number of members that lived in Oak Park? These are the things you should count. I've been in Oak Park over 40 some years. I knew Dodd and Dodd personally. I knew many members at the church. I knew many other things that I'm not going to bring up here over there. But these are the things that you should go to the neighborhood. The, they, many of these people here know who I am. They see me down here, but no. One of the main people that's in there, but what they said, Mac, what you think about this, or what would you uh, input be on this? So I grew up in the church, but there was Baptist church. A lot of this was saying that the church helped people. I know. I know when we had molasses and put grease on them to mix it because we didn't have butter. People... Uh, it's sad to see that we will come out to this type of thing instead of to the real issues down here. We don't get the church support because you get the church support. This caviar is when that get rid of be towed down, they can't come at whoever the city council over there. That's all this is about. This ain't about uh, helping no part. This ain't about giving the church recognition. That church had recognition years, years ago. Mr. Worthy, your about time down has expired. Field, uh, they don't talk about the Momo Club. Thank you for your comments. Um, K.M. Marie West. Thank you, City Council, for allowing me this opportunity to address you. I'm a citizen of Oak Park. I'm a member of Shiloh Baptist Church. I moved here from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, our daughter is now a senior at Spelman. Uh, without the support and the prayers of this church and our pastor who is here, and the members of the church, we just humbly ask for this recognition. Oak Park is, uh, Shiloh Baptist Church is the landmark in Oak Park community. It has uh, clothing drives, back to school drives. The, there are several generations that are there and it would just be an, input, an, an asset to the neighborhood, an asset to the community and an honor. There are people that come from all over Sacramento and all over the world to come see Shiloh, but also it's so much, it's faith and hope and we have generations that will follow us when we're not here that need to see that this remains in Oak Park. It's not just a church, it's a home. It's a place of refuge, it's a place of honor. There are people that have been, that have given their, 
their lives and their sweat and blood to make Shiloh there, but also they've given their love to the community, they've given their love to the children, and also to Reverend Cook, and just please consider humbly that it remains on the register, and just thank you for just allowing us the opportunity to remain here. There are so many people that, that this is just a good place to be. They're children, they have violin ministries, they have choirs. If you would just come out sometime to visit, and see what the youth are, are doing at Shiloh in the choirs and in the community. They're going to school. They're progressing. Our pastor is just an asset to us. He lifts us up, and we're just honored to still be considered, and thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments, Ms. West, and congratulations on the success of your daughter. Ella Roberts. <coughs> Sitting in the back is my husband, Richard Perry. We owned property behind Shiloh since 1982. And we've noticed that you don't show the back, which is an eyesore and has been an eyesore the whole time we've lived there. And it lowers our property values. So I don't know whether I'm for or against it being a landmark. I don't know how it's going to affect us. But I'm telling you how it affects us is I have to go over there and chase off drug pushers. I have to go over there and chase off gangbangers who come over from Ninth Avenue because you can walk through one part of the property to the other. I have to chase off burglars who walk through there. Um, I've had to chase off teenagers smoking dope over there. I have to clean up the used condoms. I have to chase off the party people. I have to chase off the hookers who park in the back and use their use cars for their jobs. The front is beautiful. The back is ugly. There's no pictures of it. You don't see the pile of dead wood. You don't see the often piles of dead fur of dumped furniture, the abandoned cars. The dog fight that happened at 2 o'clock in the afternoon where 50 people and two dogs were fighting. I had to go over and stop it. When I called the church and I said, didn't you notice all those people? They said, oh yeah, we didn't know who those people were. Why am I their un unpaid for security guard? So I don't know if I'm against it being a landmark or not, but the back is an eyesore. We, we complained for, I think, 10 years. The nasty pile of, of metal in the front, it is now blocking the alleyway. When we tell the children they cannot play on that pile of metal and hurt themselves, we're told, we're members of this church, you can't stop us from playing on this pile of metal. I want you guys to have this look at that pile of metal in front of your house all day, every day. So... Um, Let's see, drug deals, kids smoking dope. Let's see, I'm trying to make sure I have everything. They do have good programs for the kids in the summer. Um, Ms. Roberts, have, your time has expired. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Okay, that's it for our public comments. Council Member Schneer. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I want to congratulate uh, Pastor Sadler and the members of Shiloh who have come today and, and thank the city staff for its work on this. Um, I really want to comment on what Ms. West said because I think you're entirely right. And while it's a nice building and it's been there for a while and, and it's got a lot of history around the building, it's really what's in the building that's most important and the spirit of the congregation and what you bring to Oak Park. And um, in my 19 months, I've been to a number of events, including your 150th anniversary, which was just wonderful. And um, so I, I think this is really fitting. I'm glad you're all here tonight. I, Again, want to congratulate you. You are just an institutionalized piece of Oak Park and the history of the neighborhood, and I hope you'll be there for a long, long time. And um, generally want to add my thanks to really the engagement that you're putting in, in with your congregation into Oak Park. Um, I think the last time I was there was for the ceasefire walk, and you're taking a role in that I think is really important as well because it's really about making the neighborhood safe for all of its neighbors. So thank you, congratulations, and I'd like to move the item. Second. The item is moved and seconded, but Pastor Sadler, I have a note here from Mayor Kevin Johnson that I've been asked to read on his behalf, which is to thank personally Reverend Cook, who he says literally built the church with his congregation, now 90 years young, is watching at home. Is that right? 90, 94 years old. Okay. That's it. And watching at home, and Mayor Johnson says thank you very much. We have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Any opposed or abstaining? Congratulations.
Pastor Sadler, would you like to say something? Has to be nice, though. <laughs> it's nice to be nice, Jay. Hey, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Ashby, uh, to our city manager, city council. We just want to thank you for the action you took. We, we feel it is well-deserved. God has used us to bless the greater Sacramento region for many, many, many years. I, I'm not the founding pastor, amen, 155 years old. Uh, I happen to be graced to be the 30th pastor of this great institution, and, and we're thrilled about this recognition, especially what it means to the community, what it means to our church, uh, what it means to our pastor emeritus, Pastor uh, Willie Pete Cook who is an alien at home at 94 years old and is able to see one more act of kindness from the city, uh, letting him know that they appreciate so much his labor of love that he has given the Sacramento for so many, many, many years. So we thank you for your action, for your consideration. Thank you very much. Congratulations to you and your congregation. Madam Clerk. Okay, our next item is also a public hearing. It's the Old City Cemetery, Sacramento City Cemetery Historic District nomination. Good evening. I'm Suzanne Cook with Community De Development Department. I'll be giving a brief PowerPoint presentation on the historic district nomination for the his uh, historic city cemetery. The city cemetery was established in 1849. In 2007, the city council adopted a master plan recommending that the City Cemetery be nominated for listing in the Sacramento and National Registers. Uh, the City's Convention, Culture, and Leisure Department requested the nomination to the Sacramento and National Registers. The next several slides are of the features of the cemetery. Um, here we have the terrace plots and retaining walls found throughout the cemetery curb walls and metal fencing, including cast iron, beautiful mausoleums and monuments, including this marbled ma mausoleum, veritable uh, museum of hand-carved headstones, various pathways of um, designs and materials, various vegetation and tree canopy, including heritage roses. Uh, this slide shows all the uh, eligibility criteria for the city cemetery. And these are the contributing resources and significant features of the city cemetery. And staff recommends to pass an ordinance adding the Historic City Cemetery to the Sacramento Register of Historic and Cultural Resources as a historic district and including its contributing resources and significant features and characteristics. That concludes um, staff's presentation. Marsha Eyman, um, who's representing the applicant, is here to say a few words. Good evening, I'm Marsha Iman, council members. I am the city historian uh, in the Convention, Culture, and Leisure Center Department. And I wanted to just take a couple minutes. Uh, there are incredible resources, physical landscapes that are part of the Old City Cemetery. But I think the thing that also, just like the church to remember, although you can't see the people, it represents the people. And what it represents about the city of Sacramento is the diversity of which the city started with and still remains today. Unlike many cities, many cemeteries throughout the United States, this was not um, segregated or exclusive. You can see all of the people of all different nationalities are represented in this place. And it truly is a treasure for this community. And I strongly hope, I'm sure, hope you will support this. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. We have a couple of folks from the public signed up to speak on this item, and then we'll hear from Councilmember Rob Fong. It's William Berg and Mac Worthy. Uh, 
Good evening once again. My name is William Berg. I'm president of the Sacramento Old City Association. I'd like to express my support for this nomination. This weekend over the Labor Day holiday, there was a tour of labor history and uh, residents of the cemetery who were involved in events like the Pullman strike, 1934 cannery strikes, uh, and various other labor activism throughout the city's history uh, who would probably find some common ground with the people outside this window. They're there alongside uh, elected representatives, captains of industry, local business people, and a, a complete spectrum of Sacramento's history. Uh, I also encourage city staff upon this listing to forward the nomination for listing in the National Register of Historic Places. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Mac Worthy. <clears throat> The same thing here as pertaining to what I said about the church development. This is not about the cemetery and not about who's in that cemetery. A dead, the dead knoweth nothing. You know who lies beside of you. Go to your Bible, you'll find that. Now, this should be what you should be putting. That's CB Cycle. CB Cycle is on the books to be demolished. That's CB Cycle. So the caveat is to do something on Broadway, landmark. When you push the, into your computer on your car for direction, do it show a cemetery or a church? No. Nope. Think about it. Why did your high technology pick this landmark up? Because it didn't deal with nonprofit. It was a caveat of economics or capitalism. That's why. So people... Uh, if there's nothing wrong with the church. I thought all cemeteries were landmarks, which we're going to find back here at the rail yard. We're going to find, when we dig down, we're going to find an uh, Indian cemetery. Who's going to make a move on it? And we hope the people here that has the knowledge that to, to research the bones and prove facts. So that's going to be a hang-up. If you're going to respect one, respect them all. Common sense, people. That's all it is. Deal with common sense and quit... Pimping the people. This is pimping the people. The people. This is what they're doing. This the thing is to say, well, we done this for you, and uh, vote for me. People, roll your own dice. From November on, roll your own dice, people, because it's going to be down the road of hell from now. If it ain't about a job, keep your dice in your pocket. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Worthy. Council Member Rob Fong. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I um, was frankly a little bit shocked. And, and by the way, congratulations to Shiloh Baptist. That's fantastic. Um, it, it, it concerns me that you've become something on the historic register when your birth is very close to my own. So hopefully that doesn't mean anything. But as far as the cemetery is concerned, I guess I, I'm, I'm surprised that you already weren't. Uh, in, in, the, uh, in our historic register. So I am pleased to move this item. I, I think that um, when you think about the birth of Sacramento, kind of the center of the city, it really is real close to that. And um, like I said before, I mean, we had, uh, when we honored the Old City uh, Cemetery Association and certainly the historic world-class Rose Garden, there is a lot going on there. And uh, uh, Mac, maybe you're right. I don't know who programs those things in, in the GPS things, but uh, certainly um, if you are looking for something to do in the city of Sacramento that is free, fun, and educational, I would invite everyone to take some time to go see who's buried in that cemetery. It literally is um, the history of this city uh, from its inception. Um, I also know that there are uh, great events throughout the year. The fun one uh, is certainly around uh, Halloween. Kind of scary, but fun. They're guided tours. So I am pleased uh, to, to move staff's recommendation. This is a long time coming and uh, well-deserved, uh, much like uh, uh, with Shiloh Baptist. So I, I'd like to move staff's recommendation. Second. 
Okay, moved and seconded. Again, I have a note from Mayor Johnson who would like to extend his gratitude to the many volunteers who have helped preserve the cemetery and make it thrive, particularly groups like the Rose Society, Master Gardeners, and historians who have made annual events like Halloween tours, Spring in Bloom, and the Firefighters Memorial Annual Traditions, as Councilmember Rob Fong has stated. So moved and seconded. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Any opposed or abstaining? Congratulations. Madam Clerk. Okay, our last item then is discussion calendar number 16. It's an ordinance authorizing the revenue bonds to finance city enterprises. Good evening, Vice Mayor Ashby and council members. Ryan Wong with the city treasurer's office. The item before you is the proposed ordinance concerning revenue bonds uh, issued by enterprise revenue bonds to finance city um, enterprises. Currently, Chapter 3 of the City Code um, regarding revenue and finances does not allow the City Council to authorize the issuance of enterprise revenue bonds. The proposed ordinance before you would enable City Council to authorize, as the need arises, uh, issuance of bonds secured by the pledge of revenue from various enterprise funds. As you may recall, on March the 27th of this year, Council approved rate increases of the city water and wastewater user rates. The rate increases will help pay debt service payments associated with bonds to be issued for the necessary capital improvements for the city's aging water and wastewater infrastructure. Before the city can issue any type of water or wastewater revenue bonds, which are anticipated in early calendar year 2013, an ordinance which allows City Council to be able to authorize the issuance of enterprise revenue bonds must be adopted. It's important to note that uh, staff's recommendation this evening is only to adopt the proposed ordinance. It does not uh, authorize the issuance of any specific revenue bonds, merely allows the issuance of bonds. Formal requests to issue enterprise revenue bonds will be brought back subsequently as the need arises. At this time, staff recommends the adoption of the ordinance, adding Chapter 3.152 to the Sacramento City Code, thereby authorizing the issuance of bonds that are payable from revenues of a city enterprise and used to finance capital improvements. Staff is available to answer questions that you may have. Thank you very much. We have no one from the public signed up to speak, so I can entertain a motion from one of my colleagues. Second. Item is moved and seconded. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Any opposed or abstaining? Motion passes. Thank okay. you. Thank you. That's the end of our agenda. Do my colleagues have comments, ideas, or questions? Council Member Daryl Fong up first. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, if you could join us this Saturday at the Pocket Canal Cleanup Day. It starts at 9 o'clock this Saturday at 12 p.m. We'll be meeting at Portuguese Park, which is at 7350 Free Way. Please bring the appropriate clothing. And if any questions that people want to volunteer, please call our office at 808-7007. Thank you. Council Member McCarty. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, an announcement and a request of the City Manager. Uh, first. In um, District 6 this uh, Saturday is the Greater Sacramento Vietnamese American Chamber of Commerce uh, Little Saigon Fair. That's at the corner of Stockton Boulevard and Florin Road. Saturday, September 8th from 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. And the ceremony is at uh, 10 a.m. And then a request for our city manager and uh, our city auditor, Jorge Asagura. Is that correct? Last name? Asagura? Mm -hmm. Okay, I haven't seen him for a while, so I kind of forgot his last name. But uh, he came and uh, spoke to us a few months ago on the, uh, on the uh, whistleblower hotline uh, proposal. And this wasn't spurred by the speaker earlier, but I'm sure the speaker would be pleased to know that our, my understanding, our city manager and our city uh, auditor have uh, come to uh, an agreement as far as implementation. And I thought maybe it would be nice to report back to the city council how that's going to play out and also report to the uh, public what it means as well. So hopefully we can get that scheduled in the next coming weeks and the policy, of course, as well. Thank you. Great. Council Member Steve Cohn. 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, several announcements uh, on Thursday, September 6th at 6 o'clock, uh, we'll be having a community meeting uh, on plans to rebuild the McKinley Playground. It'll be in the Grand Hall at the Clooney Community Center at, on Alhambra Boulevard. That's uh, 6 o'clock Thursday. On uh, Friday uh, at 9.30 in the morning, there's a senior citizen town hall at the Stanford Settlement on West El Camino. Uh, topics including how to make ends meet, good transportation options, affordable housing, making home repairs. Uh, so any seniors interested are invited to attend. Um, then on Saturday the 8th, uh, there'll be a fun run to benefit the Rebuild McKinley uh, effort run, called Run for the Playground. Uh, it's a 5K run, walk, and kids half mile. Uh, start and finish line, we make it real easy, or from the McKinley Park Playground. Um, for more details, uh, visit the rebuildmckinley.org uh, website. And then finally on uh, Saturday uh, all afternoon from noon to four, uh, Vice Mayor Ashby, Council Member Fong and I together with Supervisor Phil Cerna, Assembly Members Roger Dickinson and Dr. Pan are um, uh, pleased to partner with the many, many community volunteers to bring back the popular Celebrate Natomas event, which will be at the South Natomas Community Center on Truxel, so it should be a great afternoon. Thank you. Great. Councilmember Jay Schneer. Thank you, Vice Mayor. A few announcements. Uh, this Thursday night is Oak Park Neighborhood Association's monthly meeting, and if you want to see about 70 active participants in a neighborhood, it will be at the food bank at 6 o'clock. And then a busy Saturday um, working with uh, Senator Daryl Steinberg, we have the Oak Park, at the Oak Park Community Center is the volunteer fair that he puts on every year. At 5 o'clock at Bret Hart Elementary School, which is on 9th and Franklin, we have PTA's Back to School Barbecue. And then at 7 p.m., it's our last uh, movie night. It's Hollywood Park movie at Da Vinci School, and it's the Lorax. Is that right? That's right. That's it. Council Member Bonnie Pinnell. I would like, like to thank U.S. Bank. They raised money to buy supplies for 500 backpacks for Phoenix Park, along with my office. That's good. That's a lot of backpacks. True. All right, if that's it, then we will adjourn. Thank you.